So, I noticed that in the beginning of your games, uh, you are doing the first thing that we should be doing, which is, in the beginning of the game, it's very important that uh, we try to control the center. The center is one of these uh, uh, four squares. We have to put a pawn in the center, okay? So, I noticed that you're doing that. So, let's say for a first move, what do you play? You can do the move on the chessboard. Very good. Okay. Let's say your opponent played uh, the pawn to e5. Okay. What I saw after that, 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 you are, that you are doing a lot of pawn moves and you are moving your queen uh, a lot. Okay. Or if you develop a piece, let's say if you put a piece out, you're moving the same piece several times. What we should be focusing on in the beginning of the game is to uh, develop our minor pieces. It means that we should take out our knights and bishops and without wasting time without doing extra pawn moves we only do move moves with pawns that are necessary okay so here let's see if we will start doing that knights and bishops out as fast as we can and the closest to the center as possible our moves have to do always with the center okay. so not on the edges of the chessboard yeah. very good that's that would be a good move okay let's say i played knight to f6. Now, which knight or bishop should you should you develop, do you think, here? Um, what about pawn to d3? Pawn to d3 is good, very good. Here we can do it, because already the light square bishop is out, right? So you can't play pawn to d3. Uh, this pawn move is already necessary for two reasons. You are defending the pawn that's on e4, but a better reason is that you are uh, clearing the way for your dark square bishop, right? The diagonal for the dark square bishop to take that bishop out. So this pawn move is justified, okay? Uh, or you could have developed one of your pieces and protect this pawn. Which piece would that be? That would also be a good move. Okay, what about a piece, if we're going to develop a piece? If we're going to move one of the pawns, then it's definitely the... Yes, which one? My knight to c3. Yes, the knight to c3 will also be defending the pawn on e4. Very good. So, if we go back, uh, if you have to pick a pawn uh, between f3 and d3 to, to push to defend, it definitely has to be the one that's on d3, okay? The pushing the pawn to f3 weakens your king. We don't want to make our king weaker. Uh, in addition, this f3 square would be uh, would be taken by the pawn. We want to use the square by which piece here? Uh, we need it for moving the queen. For moving the knight. Okay, the knight. Because we need to develop the knight and yeah, bishops right. first, right? I noticed you are developing the queen early on. Okay, we will talk about that, that uh, you are trying to do the early checkmate. Okay, so let's see here. Then, uh, you played pawn to d3, that's that's a good move. Let's say I played knight to c6, what are you going to play here? Uh, Remember, follow the principles, knights and bishops out as fast as we can. And castle, knights and bishops out as fast as we can, and castle your king. Knight to f3, yes, knight to f3, that's a good move. Let's say I, mm, let's say I played my bishop to c5, how are you going to continue here? Uh, pawn to d4. Okay, so let's see, is that pawn move necessary now? First of all, we, we already moved this pawn once, uh, you're pushing it twice, that's 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 one thing. That do we need this to develop our pieces right now? Uh, not really. No. Okay. Plus, we have to be very careful with such move. Let's say even if we had our pieces out and we had castled, and now let's say you are free to do such moves. Okay. We have to be careful about this move. For example, here, if we play this move, we have to calculate very well how many black pieces can capture this pawn that you just pushed. One black piece can capture this pawn? Yeah, the pawn can capture one and then I can capture it with a knight. Okay, but, but how many black pieces can capture on the four? Just the pawn. There are no other pieces that can capture there. 
three pieces, right? Three pieces that can yeah. capture on D4. Well, you have how many pieces that can that can capture back that are defending this pawn? Uh, I have my knight. And one more. The queen as well. The queen. You have two pieces defending this pawn, three pieces attacking. So if you push that pawn, you're gonna lose it. I'm going to be able to capture it and win your pawn. So we have to be very careful when you're yeah. pushing a pawn to a square where there are many pieces that can capture, always count how many are capturing and how many are defending. So this is a, no, that's one reason. Another reason is, we said other than okay. also developing knights and bishops in the beginning, another reason is this, your pawn, you put it on d3 for a reason. You should not forget the reason. What was the reason to put your pawn on d3? Why did you put the pawn there? Defending my other pawn. Yes. So by pushing this pawn, you're also weakening that pawn. So we have to always be careful uh, when we are pushing pawns uh, or uh, moving pieces from their places if they had a job and if they are stopping to do that if something's changing in the position. So anyways, here we need to focus on developing knights and bishops and castling. So what makes a good move here then? Very good. To which square? Uh, probably c3. Knight to c3 is a good move. Let's say I played a pawn to d6. Now, what will you play? Bishop to d2. You can place uh, you can place this bishop also on let's say more active uh, squares. For example, you can place it on g5 if you want, and g5 is going to be is going to be very good here because we are pinning the knight. Right, this knight cannot move because behind it behind it there is the queen. Right, so this would be a good move. But if there are no safe squares, and let's say you don't want to put it on e3 and trade it, of course, it's better to put it on d2 uh, rather than uh, not develop it at all. So we have to develop it. We have to take the bishop out for sure. But here, this square is much more active, much better on, uh, on g5. So let's say I castled. What are you going to play next with white? Against what? You're defending it because what piece is attacking it? Uh, it's not currently getting attacked, but yeah, just in case the queen uh, somehow takes my bishop, so I can take it back. Okay, you mean this bishop? Yeah. Okay, but that bishop is already already safe and is defended already with what? Even if there's a... There's oh, yeah, that's a knight. There's a knight that is already safe. Plus, it's very difficult for that queen to capture. If that queen wants to capture you, it means that they moved away their knight, but then you can capture them before they capture you, right? So we don't need to worry about uh, about that. So let's see. Again, what should we focus on here? What is a move that we still didn't play? Taking out the queen. Okay, so... In the beginning, we said pawn in the middle of the chessboard, knights, bishops out, and castling, right? Before we start thinking about attacking, right? So, what to play here? Um, maybe switching the king. Yes, that's called castling. That's called castling, okay? Switching the king is called castling. So here, we're going to castle, okay? Let's say we castled here, and... Uh, What's next? After this step, what is next? Now, let's say a black is playing a move, um, black played such a move, so uh, what is that? Next is the time for our queen to move and our rooks to move, the, the major piece, the bigger pieces, okay? So, and for, for the queen, we have to be very careful with it. We don't take the queen out uh, too early because it's very valuable. We don't want to be uh, attacked and we don't want to lose our queen, right? So we don't want to take it out too early. We just move it a bit. Let's say we move it just uh, to e2 because we want 
our rocks to be connected. We want our rocks to work together. Rocks, rocks are strong when they are connected and they are working together. Okay, so let's say we move the queen and then yeah. uh, we are moving the rooks to the to the files that are in the center. Let's say uh, a black plate and you move. Let's say now it's time for the rooks. So we can put one rook, let's say, on e1 and then another rook. Let's say I played a random move. Another rook, you can place it on d1. So in this way, you will have put all your pieces on good squares when you are starting your game. So this is what we should focus on in the beginning, okay? Okay. Okay, so I want you now want to start your games like this. Don't do too many pawn moves. Uh, don't move your queen too early out, okay? And try to start like this. So yeah. we're going to start all over here uh, from the beginning of the starting position and I want you to uh, to show me how should we start. You can do the moves on the chessboard. Okay. Very good. 